Let's continue learning about the unique characteristics of each phylum in Kingdom Animalia. In this video, we're going to be looking at the second phylum, Phylum Nidaria. Beautiful, diverse, and dangerous, Phylum Nidaria, or sometimes called Phylum Silenterata, are a staple of the ocean. So let's have a look at its unique characteristics. So these are images that show some organisms in this phylum and one of the unique characteristics that we can talk about them right away is that they are eumetazoas which means nidarias have true tissues as opposed to poriferous a second unique characteristic is that they are usually solitary uh, but they can also exist as colonies so the ones that are solitary are examples jellyfish and the ones that are in colonies are for examples corals most of them are marine like obelia species some of them are freshwater species like hydra species and they can be sessile or motile depending on their life cycle their the stages in their life cycle or the species they have a basic body plan where they have the outer layer or ectoderm and an inner layer called endoderm that is separated by a mesoglea. As you see here, since they have ectoderm, endoderm, but no mesoderm, they are diploblastic. They also show radial symmetry as you can cut them from many directions and they would still be mirror images of each part. Other unique characteristics, the elementary canal of nidarians are incomplete. So that means they have a central digestive compartment, which is called a gastrovascular cavity, with a single opening. That opening will function as both the mouth, mouth and the anus of the organism. So food goes in one hole, gets digested, and then gets thrown out of the same hole. The mouth of nidarians will be surrounded by tentacles. So the mouth can be pointed up in this body plan or it can be pointed down in this body plan. So talking about the body plans, they have two body shapes depending on their species and also the stages in their life cycle. The first of these body shapes is the polyp and the second is the medusa. So let's have a bit of a closer look at these body shapes. When it is in polyp shape, this is diagrams showing nidarians in polyp body shape. It will be cylindrical. The mouth and the tentacles will be pointing upwards. As you see in this hydra species diagram, the mouth is up here and the tentacles are moving up here. In sea anemones, the mouth will be in the middle over here. And it is surrounded by these, in this diagram, green stinging tentacles when they are in the polyp body shape they're usually sessile and they are adhering to a substratum so this down here yang bahagian bawah ini dia akan melekat kepada uh, contohnya batu-batu pasir ataupun permukaan-permukaan uh, lain so it's not going to be moving around when it is in polyp form Examples are, of course, hydra species and actinia species, which is sea anemone. Alright, let's talk about the second body shape. The second body shape is in medusa shape. So this is what you would usually think about when you think of jellyfish. This is a bell shape where the mouth and the tentacles are pointing downwards. So the mouth will be here, the tentacles are pointing down, as you would imagine a jellyfish to be. And when they are in the medusa body shape, they are able to move. So they are either floating or free swimming. An example of this is a species of jellyfish called Aurelia species. Okay, so this is diagram of Aurelia species and a picture of Aurelia species. Again, once again, we see the polyp and medusa shape side by side. You can see that the basic shape is still here. You still have the vest gastrovascular cavity the mouth or the anus either it's pointing up or pointing down the mouth will be surrounded by tentacles the layer that is surrounding the gastrovascular cavity is called the gastrodermis lapisan cell perut gastrodermis kulit the mesoglea the epidermis so you can see this is just a flipped version of each other 
once again, more diagrams showing the differences between the polyp body shape and the medusa body shape. This is between hydra, sea anemone, and a jellyfish. Let's move on to the other unique characteristics of phylum Nidaria. Nidarians are carnivores, so they're going to be eating other organisms, and they have tentacles for defense and feeding. The tentacles can have nidocytes, C-N-I-D-O-C-Y-T-E-S, nidocytes. And these nidocytes are cells that contain nematocysts. So inside the cell is this hook and trigger and thread mechanism, also called nematocyst or stinging structure. The nematocyst contains stinging thread that are coiled and then penetrate the body wall of the nidarian spray. So this is what makes a jellyfish, sea anemone, and hydra able to catch their prey, catch their food, and also depend, defend themselves. So kalau kamu cakap kamu kena sengat, kena jarum, eh, well, stung by a jellyfish, that means you have the nematocyst of the jellyfish inside of your skin. And it also contains toxins, depending on the species, can be very dangerous or it can be harmless. Okay, so another diagram showing how the nematocyst will, will be stored inside of the nidocyte inside of the tentacle. So one tentacle can have numerous nidocytes. The thread can penetrate very deeply into the prey. Okay. One more thing we need to talk about the characteristics of uh, Nidaria is the dimorphism in the body plan. So once again, this is relating to that polyp and medusa stages. The, there's an existence of two different forms of individual within the same animal species. So there is the polyp stage and the medusa stage. When it's in the polyp stage, it is sessile. When it is medusa stage, it is floating. And we usually like to use the example of this organism called obilia species so let's talk about the dimorphism in obilia species in obilia species the individuals exist in colonies it's not multicellular it's colonies it is i mean so dalam colony ito ada banyak individu setiap individu adalah multicellular organism sendiri so dirang tinggal sama-sama satu colony uh, the dimorphism exists in both polyp and medusa forms. It has two types of polyps. Some part of the colony will form the reproductive polyp. So reproductive polyp will not have tentacles. And some parts of the colony will form the feeding polyp, which will have tentacles. The polyp will reproduce asexually by budding. So kalau dia mau uh, reproduce asexually, they are Putuskan saja bahagian dari, satu bahagian daripada dia dalam proses yang digelar sebagai budding. And this is where the reproductive polyp produce medusa by budding asexually. So it's just going to release medusa. And then the medusa does its own thing. When the medusa is floating around in the water and when it is ready, it will produce, reproduce sexually by producing gametes. So the polyp stage will not be producing gamete. The medusa stage will produce egg and sperm, which is the female and male gametes. This is asexually by budding. This is sexually by producing gametes. Okay, so this video on Nidarians is actually pretty short. What you need to focus on in this phylum is talking about the nematocysts and also the dimorphism especially by using obelia as a species. So that is the end of the slides. And over here, we have the links and the QR code to this interesting video, The Fascinating World of Nidarians by Natural World Facts. So go ahead and have a watch at that video. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. This has been Phylum Nidaria, and I will see you in the next Phylum video. Thank you and bye.